As you have ongoing exposure to people with a strong narcissistic bent, one of the themes that's part of their life that uh, is very prominent is gonna keep coming back at you over and over, and that is the theme of their delusional thinking. You see, a long time ago, narcissists decided that having full openness and self-disclosure and engagement with other people about thoughts and perceptions and interpretations and feelings was way too risky. And so they went about the business of creating a false front. And in fact, uh, one of the, the defining features of narcissism is the tendency to live with their own false reality. They want you to think of them as being somebody that they're actually not. They, they want to uh, present themselves as more than what they really are. But you know, one of the things that, uh, that tends to come along with this delusional thinking and their deluding of you is they actually have already deluded themselves about who they are. They can't be honest with themselves, therefore they're completely unable to be honest with you. So today I wanna to talk about seven evidences of a narcissist delusional thinking, and it's important for you to be on to that so that you can learn how to respond wisely. Uh, many times people that uh, are exposed to their delusions get caught up in trying to explain to that narcissist why they're wrong, and before you know it, they wind up getting caught in that person's snares, and we don't need to do that. So let me go through these seven evidences with you, and then let's see if we can figure out how we're gonna respond. Uh, one of the first things uh, that's evidence of a narcissist delusional thinking is their ability to rationalize their improprieties with you, especially regarding their controlling nature. For example, if, if you were to confront a narcissist and say, you know, th this controlling stuff that you're doing is not working well, or I, I really don't like the fact that you have to shut me down so much because you always have to have the final word, then they can, they can rationalize and say, I, I'm not being controlling. I'm, I just have some things that I want to say, or I'm a very strong leader, or I'm being helpful, or I'm trying to protect you from some of the things out there that you just don't want to have to deal with. And, and even as they're being micromanaging or maybe even Machiavellian in the way that they do things, by that I mean uh, micromanaging and, and doing it with a real harshness, they've got the whole thing rationalized saying, no, this is, this is good. I, I'm being a good person. Um, by uh, acting the way that I uh, do toward you. You just don't appreciate it. Or number two, in terms of uh, indicators of their delusional thinking, and that is they will constantly deflect any kind of problem between you and them back onto you, which is a nice way of saying they're truly incapable of Im admitting anything that's wrong. They'll basically say things like, you're the one that's impossible to, uh, to reason with, or your stupidity is what keeps us from moving forward, or uh, uh, I, just, I just can't seem to get any kind of traction with you because you won't listen. They have an, a complete inability to have a fair and adult exchange about things that are different between yourself and them. That's delusional. Or a third indicator of their delusion, and that is, they have a major need to appear certain. I want you to think about that word certainty. How uh, realistic is it for an individual to say, well, I have life completely figured out. I'm certain about anything and everything. Just ask me, I'll tell you. Well, you know, there are some things that we can feel certain about or we can have strong opinions about, but the narcissistic need for certainty is, is quite pathological. You know, the way I look at it is not everything in life fits nice and neatly into its own uh, little slot or its own groove. Life is not black and white in the same way that narcissists will think that it is. And in their delusional thinking, they're unable to pick up on nuances. They're unable to pick up on distinctions about uh, people. And you know, for example, somebody that grew up in one part of the country in a socioeconomic level with a certain kind of influence or ethnicity is not going to have the same take as somebody who's grown up with something entirely different. And a part of our ability to get along with each other is to say, well, uh, let me just lay down what I think is the ultimate way of doing things and let me hear about you. And, and having that openness and somehow or another, uh, that openness or that ability to uh, to exchange thoughts in a less than certain and black and white way and, and having a, a pliable mindset, to them that's compromise or that's uh, somehow or another minimizing who they are and they just simply can't do it. Uh, differentness, distinction is something that, uh, that they're unable to manage despite the fact that 
It's just truth. It's, it's the way life is. Or a fourth delusion that they can have. And that is they have many indicators that they want to be treated with favoritism. And it can come down to them wanting to have the, the special uh, place of, of honor uh, with whatever group they're with. Or sometimes if you're with them in traffic, the rest of us have to live with some of the crummy traffic. But the narcissist gets especially angry. Or speaking of anger, when they get angry, they can yell and they can shout and demean. But you better not do it because they're special, they're unique, and they have the right to do that. They may plan events around their preferences, but then they don't plan events with you and they don't necessarily acknowledge uh, the, the upbeat side of yourself. They have to be special and the delusion is, and they're the only one that really deserves the specialness. Or a fifth uh, uh, indicator of their delusional thinking is they're heavily critical and they honestly believe that it's a good and necessary thing that they're critical. In other words, they rationalize that too. It's like, well, it's actually necessary for me to speak words of direction to you because you'll never get to the finish line without me telling you how to get there. I'm very appropriate. I'm the standard bearer. And so whenever there's some sort of engagement that we have to have, then you need to look to me and I'll tell you. And if you don't want to look to me, I'll tell you anyway. And so their criticism uh, implies that there's a delusion about how important they actually are. Or a sixth delusion, uh, and that is they have a very strong need to turn people into their apologist. Um, now, in, parlance, in uh, uh, narcissistic parlance, we call that they're flying monkeys. They, they want you to think exactly as they do. They, they want you to make excuses on their behalf. And you're supposed to be their accomplice. You're supposed to be their right-hand man or woman that, uh, that just does everything according to their bidding. It's, it's very important that, that, that you have to do exactly as they tell you to do, or else you're going to be shunned and you're going to be scapegoated and you're going to be gaslit and all the rest. And then finally, a seventh delusion is they constantly wear the victim badge when you disagree with them or when you show yourself to be other. It's not as though they can say, oh, you and I disagree, but their thinking is, what are you doing to me? Why are you making my life miserable? Why do you have such a bad attitude towards me? And so they interpret life in such a way that's not reality-based. So when we talk about their delusional thinking, you can see that it's, it's pervasive. And over time, there are going to be certain conclusions that you're going to draw that I'm, frankly, I'm hoping you can draw and hold on to. And first and foremost is I'm on to you. And this delusional thinking that you bring to the equation is not going to work with me. I am unable to reason with an unreasonable person. Uh, I'm over you. You got your facts wrong. You have your facts wrong about yourself. You have your facts wrong about me. You've been dishonest about yourself and you're more than willing to be dishonest about me in the way that you engage with me in public. Therefore, I will no longer filter my emotions through you. I'll no longer fi filter my decisions through you. I'll no longer filter my uh, priorities through you. I feel no need to make excuses on your behalf. I have zero need to enable your delusions. I have zero need to enable your entitlement. I have zero need to, to, to collapse under your intimidations or uh, to prop up your insecurities. I'm hoping that there can be a mindset that says, I'm, I'm not going there with that person. I'm going to disengage where necessary. I'll establish my boundaries. I'll have separate plans. I'm going to live with calm confidence. Now, once you have learned to think that way, this person is delusional. And rather than them saying, you know, it, it's reasonable for you to have the freedom to be who you are, they just keep bringing your delusion uh, nonetheless. And as a result, uh, the response you're going to get when you let them know that you are onto them is you're going to receive battering comments. You'll be shunned. You'll receive comments that are meant to intimidate. Uh, you'll hear them make all sorts of lame excuses. They'll flip the focus back onto you and your presumed flaws. Uh, they'll reject you. They can double down on whatever it is they're delusional about. They'll invalidate uh, whatever perceptions you bring to the equation. And when that happens, it simply illustrates one huge truth. 
And that is by you letting them know I'm not into your delusions, you, uh, you expose the fact that they're very fear-based rather than them saying, okay, let's talk. They're threatened by the fact that you just don't buy into them hook, line, and sinker. They simply are not able to say, maybe I'll rethink the way that I manage life. Uh, instead, they blame, they judge, and, and all the rest. So when you see their delusional thinking, let's, let's kind of go with this my primary thought. And that is, uh, you're, uh, you don't need to be under the illusion that you can convince them of your better perspective. You don't need to enter into a debate about what's proper and improper because you can't reason with that delusional thinking. You don't need to shout and scream and shame and all the rest that goes along with it. But instead, with a non-coercive, clear mind, I'm hoping that you can assert, you're neither the, the writer nor the director of my script. And I can move along quite nicely without you and the delusions that go along with you. I'm hoping you can have the kind of calm confidence that's required to be able to take that kind of position. Now, I do hope that videos such as this prompt some good thinking in you. If you've not yet subscribed, I would encourage you to do so so that we can keep more videos coming. And beneath, uh, you'll also see that we have an email list that if you want to, I'd encourage you to sign up for that. If you need counseling to help you sift these kind of things out all through my career, I've encouraged people to obviously to go get counseling. And if there's someone in your area that could help you sift it out, I would encourage you to do so. If you don't have that resource, then uh, we've vetted a group that can help you with online counseling. And right now that's very popular. And if you'd like to go below and, and uh, uh, go through that link, then I would encourage you to do so. Uh, I've received good feedback from people who have used this service. In addition, we have uh, my uh, my free to be workshop, and it's really more than a workshop. It's like taking a full blown course where we have six different sections and uh, multiple lessons and videos and things of that nature, um, and has like 38 different sections. And so, if you would be interested in that, I would encourage you to look into the free to be workshop. In addition, we have our Surviving Narcissism TV website. DrLesCarter.com, links below to our books, a lot of resources there. We're, we're wanting to help you out. Now, just know that you are dealing with people who are stuck in their own delusions. I'm hoping you can approach these people with a clear mind, a clear conscience, a clear way of thinking and being. And when they come back at you with their predictable uh, invalidations, I'm hoping you can have calmness and steadiness. And ultimately, I want your message of peace to be the one that resonates most powerfully.